Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to talk about curved mirrors. So we're going to be discussing concave and convex spherical mirrors. So it turns out that uh, spherical mirrors are actually very useful and in order to understand what's going on first we have to look at their geometry. So the first thing I'm going to do is make an axis. Okay, and this is a line that kind of divides a spherical mirror in half and I'm going to pretend like I can draw a concave mirror it looks kinda of like this okay pretty close uh, I guess I just need to even it out a bit even it out a lot okay so here's a concave mirror and what we do is we entitle this line that cuts it in half we call it the optic axis okay and this point where the optic axis hits the center of the physical mirror is called the vertex. And because we're talking about spherical mirrors to start with, that means that it has a center and if you draw any line from the center to the mirror you're basically talking about a radius and because of that any ray that comes from the center of a mirror that strikes it will be reflected back through the center and we'll talk more about that in the next video so really what I'm going to do is split this discussion of mirrors into two parts so in this first part we'll talk a little bit about the geometry and then in the second part we'll talk a little bit more about how to actually trace the rays out okay so the center of the mirror is uh, basically the same thing as the radius so the radius would be a distance r and mirrors have an extremely special point called the focus and it turns out that the focal length of a mirror or lens is the distance from the focus to the vertex. So this focal length is labeled with an F. And the other geometry here is that the focal length is equal to half of the radius. And this will be important later on. This is just a definition. Okay, so there's two types of spherical mirrors that we're going to be talking about. Concave spherical mirrors are also known as converging mirrors. And the reason for this is that parallel rays will converge. They will focus to one point. And we'll see this a little bit more in the next video. Here's an example of a concave mirror. So there's a guy looking into it at the museum. And uh, you can see that this particular image is upside down. And it turns out that concave mirrors can form both real and virtual images. And the type of image depends on where you're at. So basically, it works kind of like this. If the object distance is less than the focal point, then you're going to have a virtual image. However, if it's greater than the focal point, you're going to have a real image. And of course, virtual is going to be upright, and real is going to be inverted. Okay, now something kind of special happens when DO equals F. So this is no image formed. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we look at our ray diagrams a bit later. Okay, and then for convex mirrors, oh, I should say a couple more things. Okay, for concave mirrors, we say that F is positive. So the mirror has positive curvature, okay? And 
the image distance can be positive or negative. So positive corresponds to real images and negative corresponds to virtual images. And again, the example that I'll do will explain this a little bit more. Okay, now we'll contrast that with convex mirrors and for these they're basically diverging mirrors which means that parallel rays spread apart or diverge after they hit the mirror. Okay, and like a plane mirror these diverging rays can be traced backwards to see where they appeared to come from and of course that's going to be where our virtual image will be okay so a convex mirror will only form virtual images so this is very important it'll only form virtual images and for a convex mirror f the focal length is negative Okay, now what this means is because they're virtual images, the image distance is always negative as well. And again, that means that the image is actually in the mirror. Okay, and an example of that is this one right here. Okay, so this is a virtual image. Notice that it's right side up. Okay, and the other quality of this image is that the absolute value of the magnification is less than one. So another way of putting this is that the image is reduced in size. Okay? And these convex mirrors um, are used on your car mirrors, the side mirrors, the uh, objects in mirror are closer than they appear and that's because they're, they actually are reduced in size in the mirror so you think they're further away. Okay. And I think that pretty much covers it for this video. Um, I guess the last thing is I want to talk about the mirror equation. And I'm not going to try to prove this, but it kind of comes from similar triangles. And the mirror equation says that there's a relationship between the object and image distances and the focal length. And it works for both types of mirrors. It says that 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di. And the key to using this equation effectively is knowing when f is positive or negative and when di is positive or negative. Now the one trick is that the object distance is always positive. Okay? And f is positive for concave and negative for convex. Okay. By the way, a convex mirror, if I were to draw the optic axis, it would look kind of like this. So light rays coming in would be kind of reflected out. Okay. All right. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to determine where an image is, not with the mirror equation, but with ray tracing. And then after that, I will show a, a quick example problem.